everyone, it's Autumn. I have a really quick haul video to film for you. Um, you may have noticed that I don't have as many hauls there for a while. It was kind of crazy where I was like doing weekly hauls. And now it's like monthly and I don't have a ton of items to show just because I'm not doing a ton of shopping. Um, the reason I'm not doing a ton of shopping is um, pretty much because I have come to the point to where, especially when cleaning out my collection and continually trying to clean things out and use things up and shopping my stash, I realized that I have over 20 eyeshadow palettes and then I have tons of like trios, duos, quads, and singles. So I just kind of feel like I have a lot of eyeshadow, which I did buy some eyeshadow, but instead of buying palettes, I think unless there's a palette that is just completely gorgeous and unique and, you know, something that I just don't have anything similar to it that I think would be like amazing. I'm just not going to buy palettes anymore because while starting out, a palette is a great deal just because you get to try so many different shadows for a really good price. But once you have a ton of palettes, like I do, or like probably many of us here on YouTube do, um, you don't really use them that often. And I don't know, like I don't really reach for my palettes that often. Normally, I just kind of reach for like singles duos, something like that, you know, just something really quick. So anyway, I have all these palettes and then I just decided that even though I can get like a nice palette for 50, between like 50 and 80 dollars depending on the palette and a single shadow that I'm about to show you cost 29 dollars. So really I could only get like two shadows for the price of like a palette. I still feel like this is a better purchase for me at this point just because I know I'm buying something that I'm going to use. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the two shadows I got. I purchased two Burberry shadows um, from Nordstrom Online. And um, I went over to a friend's house probably about a week ago. Uh, we took our girls um, to go kind of play at the Splash Park. And then we went over the, to her house and we hung out for a little bit. And she showed me her makeup collection, which is pretty awesome. Um, but anyway, she showed me some, you know, really cool things, and she had some Burberry shadows. And I only have one, which, well, I have three now, but I only had one before, which was Pear, Pale Barley, and I really like it. Um, but I don't remember how many she had, but she had probably like five or so. And I was looking at them, and since we don't actually have a counter nearby, like you have to buy them online, and although I can look at swatches online, it's, it's never quite exactly what I think it's going to be when I get it. So I was able to look at hers and swatch a couple of them. I have a list of the Burberry shadows that I want now. Um, some even that she didn't have or whatever, but it kind of gave me a better idea, I guess, of the ones that I would want. So I just, a little bit at a time, I'm going to buy one here and one there. But anyway, these are the two I got. The first one is in the shade Gold Trench. And it is a pretty, um, I would say, warm or yellow-based tan shade with a slight golden sheen or it's got little gold reflex in it so it's not that shimmery so I'll show you on the finger so you can kind of see better and then on the back of the hand my hands are kind of dry so it may not be that great um, but here it is my hands are dry so it's not sticking it would probably make really <laughs> like it would make better sense yeah because I just dusted right off because my hands are so dry I'm going to prime the back of my hand. Does anybody else, when they get a Burberry shadow, only concentrate their brush like on the pad right here because you don't want to mess up the pretty pattern? Or is that just me? So, okay, got some on my brush. And here it is. These shadows are just so gorgeous and buttery. And they blend like beautifully. I think they give the most natural blend. And any of their shadows, at least that I've purchased so far, they're beautiful just to wear on their own for a really simple look. So there's that one. When I swatched it, it reminded me a lot of a shadow that I already have. Um, and this one is by Laura Mercier in the shade Baroque. I just bought a little trio here to put three of my shades in it. Um, but let me get Baroque. Um, I do notice that Baroque seems to be a little more um, pink toned while um, the Burberry shade 
is more yellow toned, but they are, as you can see, quite similar. So here is the, the Laura Mercier and then there is the Burberry, but they both have like the little gold, you know, flecks in them, but they're both very pretty. And then the other Burberry shadow that I picked up is in the shade Almond. And it's just a really pretty satin, you know, neutral color. So I'm going to take its little sponge tip. So Almond is like a matte taupey tan. Like it looks a lot more gray like when compared to the others. But there is Almond. Um, but I really like using the almond and the gold trench together. The other day I did a look and what I did was, um, holding them up, I put gold trench like all over the lid and then I worked this one just into the crease and it, it was very natural but very pretty at the same time. So yeah, I just really love these shadows. So anyway, um, the other thing that I picked up from Nordstrom online and it was an, an inspiration purchase from the same person who had the Burberry shadows. She had this um, Laura Mercier rose gold, what are these called? Metallic cream eye colors. And I've been looking for like a perfect rose gold sort of shadow and I haven't really been able to find anything that's like, I don't know, some of them look like too coppery um, and some of them look too pink. And so I just really haven't found anything that is true rose gold to me. I swatched this at her house, um, the same person who had the the Burberry shadows. This was another inspired by. I She had it at her house and I swatched it and I thought it was really pretty. Um, so I picked it up and in my search for the perfect rose gold shadow at the drugstore I found this one and this was um, by Rimmel and this I showed this in a haul a while back and this is actually in my current beauty basket. But this is in Peachy Apricot, and I find that I just don't like the texture of this. I kind of like the color, and I'm still kind of playing with it to see if I can make myself like it, but I'll swatch it up here. Um, it just kind of seems to me like if you don't leave it like super metallic like that when you go to spread it out, it kind of dries weird, at least on my eye, and it doesn't like want to blend, and I don't know. But from the drugstore, that's that version and I really liked the color of it I thought it was a really good rose gold but I'm still just playing around with the texture so anyway meanwhile I decided to pick this up and I'll do another I'll do this little swatch of it over here and I think that the real difference in this shadow compared to like some of the other rose golds out there that are either too pink or too um, copper looking this one just has like a mauve undertone and it's bronzy and pink so I love it. So here it is. And it's kind of like gold. Like this one right here that's kind of rose gold. I don't want to say it's like a silver in it because it's not silver. But as you can see, this has more of a gold tint and this is more of like a champagne. Like when you just look at the shimmer itself. Um, and then it's got like a mauve, like a rosy mauve um, base to it instead of like pink, if that makes sense. So there is the Laura Mercier rose gold and it's absolutely gorgeous it's like the perfect rose gold so I haven't used it on the eye yet so I can't um, tell you anything like that I can tell you that when this one dries the Rimmel it feels like paint um, I'm trying to kind of tell you like the kind of paint it feels like I don't know it just it just feels like paint once it dries um, or like one of those, you know, those temporary tattoos that you put on um, that kind of have like that film sort of feeling to them. That's, that's what this feels like. It's almost like a temporary tattoo. So um, the Laura Mercier one, though, it hasn't quite set on my hand. So I don't know. I'm just going to have to kind of play around with it. But the Rimmel one, once it sets, it's set. So again, I haven't worn this one on my eye. I keep blabbing and saying the same thing, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, so those were pretty much the most exciting parts of the haul. <laughs> um, the other items are kind of boring, but I was on the Sephora website and I was kind of looking for like a new um, pencil sharpener for my lip liners and my eyeliners and my pencils and things like that because I took my favorite one with me when I went to Army and I guess I didn't make it back with me. And that one was like perfect to where it sharpened everything to a point. And I had a couple of other sharpeners 
but they did never sharpen things like to a point. And when I do my eyebrows, I like it to be sh like a sharp point to where it's almost like I'm drawing in hairs, although I don't need to, I just have a couple of gaps, but I prefer for it to look like I'm drawing in hairs as opposed to me just like kind of coloring it in because then I kind of feel like they do look drawn on. Anyway, they had these in their sale thing for, for $3 each. So I went ahead and I picked up three of them because, well, first of all, I felt bad just like ordering like one since it was $3 and I get free shipping. So that would have been kind of silly. So I picked three of them up and I got a pink one so that I could just use this for like lip pencils and like the lip chubby sticks that you have to sharpen. So I got a pink one to remember for lips. And then I got a black one obviously for eyeliners. And then I got another black one just to stick in my travel bag and to where like these pretty much stay at home and these travel with me. So um, I mean it's kind of crazy to buy three but sometimes like if you use like a lip liner and I'll probably also use like my lighter um, eyeliners that like I use for my waterline things like that but I find sometimes if I sharpen them with the black ones then I get black and then I get it on my lips or whatever I don't like that so that's why I have my own designated one so anyway the next thing I per picked up was the Sephora this was only five bucks and it's a three step kind of kit thing you get an exfoliating um, mitt an application mitt and a racing sponge so this erasing sponge I felt it it feels a lot like the um, mr. clean magic eraser um, I wonder if you're supposed to wet the sponge kind of like the magic eraser it doesn't really give any instructions whatsoever on how to use these things but um, I don't know I thought that was interesting and so I kind of um, have a little story to share with you I have some foundations that are just slightly too dark for, I don't know, for my face and for the rest of the body. But I want to be able to use them. So I have tanner and I need to use up a lot of my tanner anyway, but I don't feel comfortable like using my hands to rub it all over my body or whatever. So I wanted to get a mitt and I was just gonna buy this like San Tropez one, it's like 650, they're not expensive. But I saw this kit and I thought this would be a great deal. Um, so yeah, I got that. And I don't know if the San Tropez one has hooks on it, but this is really cool that like after I wash it, after I do it, I can actually kind of hang it to dry. Um, because I saw some people had like washed theirs or they had used them and then they like did that with them and then they stuck together and then the mitt was not usable. Um, and then the exfoliating one, which this isn't like super scratchy, but it's probably scratchy enough just to get rid of the like dead skin that's laying on the surface of the, you know, on the skin surface. So, um... Okay, so now I'm like rubbing on the Laura Mercier one and it's moving a little bit. So like around the edges has set. I think maybe I just didn't spread it thin enough or, some, or something. I'm still going to have to work with it. But um, like that Rimmel one just really sets. So that's one thing I like better about the Rimmel, but maybe that's why it doesn't blend the way I want it to because it sets and it feels like a temporary tattoo as opposed to this one kind of seems to say stay somewhat creamy. So I don't know if that's something that's going to be crease proof. I don't know why I'm coming back to this and talking about it so much. I'm going to test it out and I'll let you know. Oh my gosh. And then the three samples that nobody cares about when you buy things at Sephora. I got the Daisy Dream by Marc Jacobs. And then I got the Marula Omega Rich Pure Marula Cleansing Lotion. It says East Africa. I've never even heard of that. And then I got the Kate Somerville um, Exfolicate. I always like to travel with these if I'm only traveling for a weekend because I don't like to take my Clarisonic just for like a two day stay. If I stay more than like three or four days, I'll take the Clarisonic. If not, I like to take these little packets of exfoliants and I'll just use those at the hotel. Um, that is everything. So um, I know that I didn't buy a whole lot and I probably talked way longer than I should have, but I hope you enjoyed this and if there's anything that's coming out or that you're really enjoying just let me know below and because um, I'd really like to know. Anyway I'm going to jump off of here because I feel like I'm going crazy. So I'll talk to you soon. Bye!